Today's video, I'm gonna teach you when you should be going high fiber for fat loss. Now in previous videos, I've blamed fiber for being the culprit for some people gaining weight or not losing weight because when you go high fiber, your body does require a lot of water to process it properly. So a lot of people are not digesting fiber properly, which is making them retain a lot more water. Why well, just today I was having a discussion with a client and she met with a nutritionist and the nutritionist recommended that she goes into a high fat diet. Now the thing about high fats is that fats have a lot more calories per gram and most fats are in a liquid form and so they provide a lot of calories without a lot of bulk. Now we have to understand that the stomach is a tank. So whether you fill the tank with carbohydrates, fats or proteins or whether you fill it with water, if it's full, it's just gonna signal to your brain that it's full. And so with the high fat diet, there's going to be a lot of calories in there, but there's not gonna be a lot of volume. So this client is going to feel hungry most of the time. Now, if she stayed on that consistently, roughly four to six weeks, then her body would eventually adapt. The stomach would get adapted to the less amount of volume food but in the first two to three weeks, she's gonna be consistently hungry. So in the case of her weight loss transformation, that's especially the beginning part would be more focused on high fiber. Now, before we go on guys, take a second, hit the like button. This way it boosts our algorithm. And then the next time I release a video, which will be tomorrow, you'll be notified and I'll continue to help you with your weight loss and fat loss journey. Now there are two types of fiber. They're soluble and insoluble. So soluble puffs up while insoluble doesn't digest and provides bulk to your food. So a soluble fiber would be something like a chia seed. When you have a chia seed, what ends up happening when you add water to it? Try overnight oats. It's one of the videos in Neri's kitchen. So you can just look up overnight oats, Fit Club Winnipeg, and you'll see a recipe for it. What happens to the chia seed once you add liquids to it is it puffs up. It's like a sponge. So it adds a lot of volume. Now, an insoluble, as you guys have probably had corn before, and you're like, how did the corn go whole in and the corn go whole out? <laughs> so that doesn't break down. And what ends up happening is it provides bulk to the food. So imagine you had your food and then all of a sudden this corn got mashed into the food and then it's gonna help to push the food down faster. So soluble means that water gets into it and it absorbs and puffs up. Whereas insoluble means that your body won't digest it like it would a soluble fiber and it's just gonna stay as whole as possible. Now, soluble fiber is best used when you're in a low calories, but you're looking to feel full longer, much like the client that's gonna be going into a high fat diet. Insoluble is when maybe you've had a massive meal and you want it to get digested faster and you want it to push through the digestive system faster. But regardless of your goal, you're gonna need plenty of fluids to make this fiber go to work. So how much fiber is required? Well, that depends on the individual size of the person. So if a person is, you know, six feet and they're like 180 pounds versus somebody that's five foot three and they're 120 pounds, but they're eating the same amount of overall calories per day. The person that is larger is going to require 25 to 30 grams of soluble fiber. Under 150, somebody that's a little smaller, they wouldn't need as much fiber, and it makes sense. Their stomach tank is probably a lot smaller than the person that's, that has you know, many inches in weight on them. And so they would require 15 to 20 grams because the stomach is slightly shrunken. One of the questions that I often get is, will fiber break your fast? Well, yes. We gotta understand that the glycemic index, so how fast food is processed into energy, is on a scale from zero to 100. So zero meaning that there isn't going to be the fast broken, and 100 meaning that it's gonna happen instantaneous. So a zero is something like water. Water has zero impact on your blood sugars. And so when you drink water, it's going to not affect your fast. Whereas if you had something like a fruit roll-up, then the fruit roll-up is in the high 80s, even into the 90s on the glycemic index of zero to 100. So what ends up happening is your fast is going to almost instantaneously get broken. Now, foods like oats are rated 40, apples and chickpeas are 30, and so the more carbs to fiber ratio, the faster it'll break your fast. So if you eat a food that is 
30 grams of carbs overall and it's 29 grams of fiber, well, that's going to be a slow digesting carb. But if you have a carb that's 40 grams and it only has one gram of fiber, then that means it's going to break your fast instantaneous. So what are some low glycemic index foods that you can have? Well, cherries actually have a one to four ratio of carbs to fiber. And soon as you mix in protein or fats into the food, it actually lowers the glycemic index. So if you were to have a carb alone, which I never really recommend, unless the carb has a great carb to fiber ratio, then you should always be mixing in a fat and obviously a protein. So the next time that you go out for dinner with your friends, instead of just having a plate of fries, and I've seen that happen, have a plate of fries and add a protein to it. So even if you got a little chicken with it on the side, the having the fries by itself, even though adding the chicken is more calories, but having that complete spike of insulin happen in your body and your body not utilizing that energy for fuel, it's going to get stored as fat faster than if you actually had a little bit more calories, but you added more protein to it. So the next time you pick up a package, look for at least a one to one carb to fiber ratio. And there aren't a lot of foods that do that, but you can definitely alter your food to accomplish that. And again, this depends on where you are in your cutting phase, because towards the end of a cutting phase, I generally don't like to have a lot of fiber. And by the end of a cutting phase in the belly burn, our stomach's already shrunk and most people can't eat a lot of food by then anyways. But if you go high fiber and you're expecting to lose weight, you could be disappointed because if you go high fiber right away and your body isn't used to it, you could be retaining water. So there is a science to this, but in general speaking, go high fiber and match it with the water. Go high fiber in your early phases of your cutting cycle. Your goal date might be forever. So if your goal date is forever and you just want to slowly lose the weight, that's perfectly fine. Then you want to keep your carb and fiber ratio the same all the way through. But if you're doing a four week cutting phase like you would in a belly burn, then I would recommend that when we start to cut some of the calories that we fill you up with fiber and water. And then as we get towards more of jumping onto the scale or taking a photo, then that's what we want to decrease the amount of fiber so that we're not holding as much water. So I hope that helped you guys. Fiber, it is a key source and it's gonna be the next big trend when it comes to like keto or high protein. You already start to see it in a lot of foods and a lot of the snack foods like protein bars where they're starting to add more fiber to foods because they want you to feel fuller longer so that you eat less calories and I think that's a great thing. Now, if you're looking for a more an advanced approach to nutrition and how many grams of carbohydrates and how many grams of fiber you should be consuming, then it first starts with trying us out for five days for five bucks. If you enjoy the environment, you feel like this is the community where you belong and you feel fantastic after workout like you've seen in many of our other videos, then we could talk about getting you into the belly burn challenge. And members, maybe you haven't done a belly burn in a little while and maybe you need that little kick in the pants. The next belly burn's happening soon. Send us a message and we'll get you started.